All right, uh, this is surveying 1315 survey math at Odessa College, and we're going to talk about horizontal curves today. And uh, I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible. A lot of people find it uh, kind of complicated, but they're actually really simple. And you just have to keep a few things in mind. First off, uh, the only reason you have a curve in a road is because you can't go straight anymore. Sounds real simple, but uh, all curves are based on a bearing this way and then another bearing some other direction. And they are not all right-hand curves, but that's just real easy to work with and it makes it easier to explain. So anyway, uh, in your study of right triangles, you know that uh, in any right triangle, for any angle, except for the right angle, the sine of the angle is equal to the opposite uh, side over the hypotenuse, the cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Uh, now I'm going to throw in a, uh, uh, I'll throw a curve at you, sorry about the pun, but anyway, on any given curve, on that point of intersection, we call those two lines that are intersection, we call those tangents. And it wasn't because someone woke up one morning and decided to make a form of mathematics that was going to be confusing. It just worked out that way, and uh, if you remember what a tangent is, it'll make it way easier for you to work on uh, curves and the whole set of... Uh, coordinate geometry that goes with it. Anyway, when you have two uh, tangents, two bearings intersecting, doesn't matter what size the, uh, the circle is, there's going to be a circle that wedges up into there, and that will be the curve, and the radius of the curve, the size of the circle is going to be determined by some other factor. Usually it's the speed of the vehicle going on that road, how fast it's going, and how big the curve needs to be so that the car or truck doesn't run off the side of the road. But the math is going to be the same no matter what the size of the radius, what the size of the circle. So anyway, uh, and the circle will always intersect the tangent at one point, one point only, and the uh, radius going to the center of the circle will always be at a right angle to the tangent. So let's just draw an imaginary radius here and a radius here that are going to meet in the middle. And it's not exactly perfectly straight, not exactly anyway. Uh, it's good enough for these purposes. Now, you've got a closed figure. And you have two right angles here. You know from previous work that uh, the sum of the angles of any four-sided figure is n minus 2 times 180. Which means that the sum of these two angles has to be 180 degrees. Because this is a straight line being intersected by this line, you know that whatever this angle is, that angle added to it equals 180. Uh, so that makes that angle the same as this angle. Now we call this one the delta angle. And that's all that is, is the angle of the intersection of the two radius points coming at a tangent from the point of intersection, uh, or from these right angles to these two tangents. Now remember that the tangent function of a right triangle is the opposite over the adjacent. Well, the opposite here, if you have this line going up here, some of them you got a right triangle. And uh, that is the tangent because it's the opposite to the adjacent. And that's your hypotenuse. So, uh, you've only got one formula that deals with opposite and adjacent, and that's the tangent. So anyway, uh, when it comes time to figure out the lengths of the two lines, all you need to know is this 
angle formed by these two bearings intersecting and then this angle will be 180 minus whatever that is and for the purposes of all of our calculations because we're dealing with right triangles you take half of that delta angle so uh, let's just say that this angle here is uh, I'm going to lie and say it's 100 degrees then this one is 80 and half of that is 40 so you're always going to be dealing with half of this angle to do all your calculations so if you know that this is a 1200 foot radius then you know that the tangent of this angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So x over 1200 equals the tangent of half delta. That's your most basic computation. And that tells you the only reason you need to do this at the very beginning is you know the radius because someone tells you, like an engineer tells you. Uh, a book tells you that based on the given speed, top speed of the road, you need to have a radius of such and such. Usually on a highway it's going to be bigger than 1200, but it's a good round number. Or anyway, all you have to do to figure out this distance from the PI to here is to figure that distance divided by 1200 equals the tangent of half of the delta angle. So it's half of 80 degrees, which is 40 degrees, so half of 40, tangent of that, uh, or uh, the tangent of 40 degrees equals x over 1200. So multiply and you've got that solved. So we'll be back in a minute. This is about all the tape I can run at any given time with further explanations of the different parts of a curve.